Hey, what's going on, everybody? Mark here, and I'm excited to tell you that I have Hardware 3 installed in the Model 3 now. Uh, we had a build date of May of 2019, and I'm going to tell you all about how I got that in here and what we had to do to ultimately get it in. It wasn't fun, and it wasn't uh, anything that I want to brag about, but uh, currently we're on firmware of 10.2, uh, 2020.4.1. That's what pretty much everybody is on as we speak right now. And last night I did get a game update for the car, but I don't think that it did anything. But what we're gonna do today, we're gonna go around and I'm gonna test out the autopilot and all of the car's functions again on this uh, Hardware 3. I have my three little areas I love to test the car in. Uh, but the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about what happened. Well, my Hardware 2.5 either was failing or there was something going wrong with it because I was having so much trouble with it uh, from lane changes to almost hitting the back of other, you know others' cars. Uh, I was still paying attention and watching, but the car would actually creep up an inch forward until uh, the chimes alarm for the proximity. That was kind of weird like that. I mean, if you're not paying attention, you're looking down or something like that while you think the car is in hold, you could actually bump into the car in front of you. Uh, they did fix that with this Hardware 3 update, and they re replaced a lot of things on it. And ultimately, uh, Hardware 3 or the, the computer was something obviously wrong with it. Some of the other stuff that was happening is uh, autopilot was just failing. It was not engaging. It wouldn't lane change. It wouldn't do navigate on autopilot. So again, thankfully, since I drive a lot, we're able to get that fixed now. So uh, it took uh, about five days. Tesla was super awesome about it. The very first time I brought the car into Tesla, though, uh, you know, they're like, hey, we got to be able to recreate this and replicate it. So what I had to do was constantly have one of these either GoPros recording or record my cell phone anytime something happened and also do time date stamps so I could tell them when something was going on because it was throwing up errors but it wasn't giving any other indication or symptom that there was something wrong with it. And as you can see the vehicle's creeping forward here. There we go. And my foot's not on the on the pedal or anything like that. It's just this is what's happening right here. It thinks it's there. It stops a little bit. There it goes. It's creeping. You guys can see down there my foot off and we're still creeping up. We get that and I have to put my foot on the brake and stop it. And on this one, I'm actually on the interstate. And what's happening is I'm back behind a truck and the truck in front of me is glitching. It's like showing a truck and then a car, but autopilot is actually progressing forward as close as it can. It's, got, it, it's, it's gotten really close to this car in front of it uh, and it would still keep going. But when that car actually changes to a truck solid, then it is in fact back engaged there. But for some reason, it's not able to detect that. So what it's doing is in between those glitches, I think that it's actually uh, thinking that there's no car there when it. And on this instance right here, just lane change is not available. We're just having some issues with it. And it, the, you know, there were a few phantom breakings, but I didn't really get a chance to record those because uh, they were on uh, and off in an instant. It wasn't something that progressively worked on there. So, all right. So what we're going to do is we're going to get out here and we're going to test the car out. I want to do a couple things with it. I want to see if Hardware 3 can actually stop for a barricade. And then we're going to go over to um, our, our testing area where we go and make this sharp 90. I want to see how it handles in comparison to hardware 2.5. And lastly, we're going to head out to, uh, which is a road called Summer Trees, and it's a real windy road. Pavement markings are really, you know, sparse. So let's get out there and try it. You guys ready? All right, let's go. All right, first things first, we're going to get an autopilot here and just do right at the speed limit. Uh, somewhere around 35. So up ahead here, we have some detour signs and I gotta have my foot on the brake here right away. I don't know if it's gonna stop. I'm gonna test it. Nope, not gonna stop on that one. As you guys can see there, it did change over to uh, a, a, a truck there on the uh, radar screen. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back around and we're gonna slow it down. Now it might've stopped, it beeped. So it kind of might've stopped but I was not comfortable enough. And the reason why I'm testing this, I just want to see what happens and what goes on when uh, when we get this new hardware three, because this is the first time I'm testing it and a little bit nervous in doing it. So we'll go back around, make another loop. We'll go a little bit slower and see if I can actually get the car to stop without touching the brake. All right, so we're back on autopilot. We're gonna go down to 30 miles an hour. We were at 35 before, and we're gonna go at 30. Got the hand on the steering wheel. Hopefully it's gonna detect it. It slows down, and then that was all of the car right there. Whew. And one thing that you might have noticed there is, you know, you get the cones. I'm going to slow down just a little bit. You get the cones here. There is a cone right in front of us here in the road, and I don't know if it's going to avoid it. 
you look how close it got there. I actually watched it, was making sure it wasn't going to get uh, uh, right up against the car, but you can see that it does, and it won't avoid that one either. There at 20. It beeps at it, but I just don't feel comfortable enough hitting that. So will it stop? I'm not sure. It seems to want to stop way too late for my comfort, if you know what I mean. So that's why I just can't let it go through and do it there. All right, we're going to go to our 90 roadway. We're going to check that out over there and see if there's any difference. All right, here we go. We're coming up to it. We're going to go the, the recommended speed on here. That's what speed that we're going to do. It says 15. So we're going to take this at, you know, let's take it at 20 and see how it handles. I think you can do it at 20. It has to. There we go. We cut in really sharp on the right, a little bit jerky, and then swings out over into the other side of the lane there on the outside. Very same behavior that the hardware 2.5 did, which is, uh, you know, I, I get it, but the car's got to be able to take some 90s in here. And if it can't with hardware 3, hopefully some new programming that will help it out there. So, all right, we're going to go back around and we're going to take it on the the opposite direction and see how it handles there. All right, here we go. We're going to try it again uh, at that speed of 20. That was about as much as I'm going to do. I can't go any faster, I don't think. Uh, so we'll bring it down to 20. Okay, here we go. This is where it would cut in really close. Yep, it's doing the same thing, crossing over the line. And then it would always drift out and almost hit the curb there. It didn't do it as much this time which is pretty good there. So this road doesn't have a speed limit uh, in the computer here, so we'll put it up to the regular speed and head on out. So as you saw back there, it's the same exact uh, behavior, same thing as the hardware 2.5 uh, with that, even with the older update right there. So hopefully that's gonna be fixed soon where we can take some 90s on there. Now I know if you're watching this here, uh, most will say that it's not to be used for local roads or anything like that, but I have to put the car to the test because I wanna see the progression. I wanna see what it is. And I've done it since the very beginning of this road. So over time, you'll you'll be able to see how it progresses. But it has, honestly, it has uh, done the same behavior every time like that. Uh, cut in tight and swing out wide. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna head out to our area that we go to, um, again, to test this. Uh, I always go through this road here. It's such a pretty drive too. I love my motorcycle on it, drive it. And it makes me feel like a little bit like I'm in North Carolina. All right, so we've almost made it out here, and every time I come out here, I try to do it around 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock, uh, to test this area right here. Uh, we're coming up to some heavier traffic for our area, and I apologize if I say I have heavy traffic, and, and I understand that some places in like California, New York, etc., have way more traffic than we do here. Uh, so anyway, just bear with me when I say that. It's a lot for us. So if you didn't know where I live, I live in Daytona Beach. Uh, it's just... I mean, it's not that small, but it is small enough. And that's so weird. It always does that there too. So even between hardware 2.5 and 3, uh, that little jog at that intersection always happens. I don't have any pre-recordings of it, but trust me when I say it does. So hopefully we'll get some new future updates and releases to have this car, you know, act more uh, like human behavior. I think it's, it's coming soon. All right, so the speed limit is 25. But we're going to start off at 20. Get on autopilot. Hopefully, it'll it'll ID right here because there is an area where I have to hit it. And the lane is marked. Yeah, here it is right here. Here we go. All right, we're on autopilot. It already gave me that warning to get on force, which indicates to me that it's having a hard time trying to locate where and what, you know, what it's looking at. So with this dappled light right here, you're going to see it probably cross over. Yep crossover right there cut over those lane markings are just so faint even to my eyes you can barely see them so we got force on the steering wheel here and this area right here is where it really gets kind of funky it loses all the light there and that dappled light coming in a little bit of a crossover right there and it does well right through here this is fine and then when we get up through this little up and over it loses it again. There we go. Cross over just a little bit. You can see that on the screen. And this is where it doesn't know what to do. And you can see even people hit it here with the pine, you know, being chipped up like that. Big crossover there going into the other lane. Take control immediately. So I lost it there. Now with hardware 2.5, I was able to make it through here 
at uh, at 20 miles an hour. And with Hardboard 3, for whatever reason, I can't. So the only thing I can think of is just try it a little bit later in the evening when the light is a bit better for at least the autopilot. But once we get past that little section right there, I don't know why it's trying to go up to 47. Hey, now. Speed limit's 25. All right, a good crossover there again. Again, these lines are not painted properly. Uh, you know, they're really faint. Good correction right there. And there we go. All right, not too bad, just that one section. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip around. We're gonna go back through it. All right, we're back on. And while we're going through this, I wanted I just noticed that garbage can showed up on there, even though there's no garbage can around right away in the immediate vicinity. But the reason why those and cones are so important to Tesla is because they're gonna identify so many different uh, you know, scenarios where there's cones. So, and we lost control right there as well, all right. And back to that story there, what I was gonna say is that uh, being able to identify those cones properly and things that are in the roadway will help the car steer in the future, especially garbage cans, because how many times are there garbage cans in the roadway? And you might think it's a novelty there and kind of funny when, uh, when Tesla actually uh, gets uh, a car to look like a garbage can, uh, but yeah, it works out pretty good to, uh, for future stuff. Okay, here we go, it doesn't know where to go. Oh, I gotta take over. We'll try to get back on it as soon as possible. We're still on auto, I mean, we're still on cruise. All right, there we go. All right, it has no idea where to go right here. I'm not gonna touch it, I just wanna see what's happening. It's gonna beep like that for a while. All right, so. It won't even get it back there. Just can't, I can't find the lines. There we go. All right, we're back at 20 miles an hour. The, the fire hydrant was a cone. Uh, crossover right there. Well, that's at 25. I think I'm not gonna go back through there anymore because I just don't wanna have you know, any issues. There's a lot of pines through there, but you can see what happens on Hardware 3 with uh, the autopilot, and I'll tell you what version we are in again, which is 2020.4.1, and that was the same, pretty much the same behavior as it was with the uh, Hardware 2.5. Everyone, I wanna say thank you for watching this video. Thanks for liking and subscribing. We got the car back in the other videos um, that you see that we're gonna be coming up with. We got uh, some new accessories. I had to get rid of my floor mats and do all kinds of stuff to make some changes in here. So that's an abrupt one. But in the meantime, if you want to check out some of the other videos there or look at the links in the description, you guys can see everything we've been up to. And on that note, I'll see you again soon. Thanks for watching.